Previously, we discussed a very important experiment that was conducted by Gregor Mendel, which basically gave rise to the law of dominance, the principle of dominance. So let's briefly recall what this experiment was. Let's summarize this experiment. So what Gregor Mendel did was he crossed a true breeding tall plant with a true breeding short plant. And every time he tried this experiment, he always saw that the F1 generation offspring was always tall. In fact, every time he tried the experiment with other traits, he got the same exact result. He saw that the F1 generation offspring always resembled one of the parents and never the other parent. Now, because of this result he posed, he asked the following question. What exactly happens to the traits for shortness for the short height within this offspring? Does this F1 generation offspring lose the trait that gives it the shortness quality? Well, to answer that question, what he did was he took the F1 generation offspring and he mated it with itself to produce the F2 generation offspring. And what he saw was that although about 75% of the F2 offspring were in fact tall, the remaining 25 were actually short. And that meant that this tall F1 generation offspring had that short trait in it all along, but it was being inhibited. It wasn't actually being expressed. So because of that, what he proposed was that each one of these plants contain two hereditary factors that code for that given trait, in this case, for that given height. And nowadays we know that these two hereditary factors are simply the genes found on homologous chromosomes, and we'll see exactly what that means in just a moment. So basically he argued that because this tall F1 generation offspring contains that short trait, but the short trait is not being expressed, that means the tall trait is actually dominant over that short trait, which is said to be recessive. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So this is the tall true breeding plant. And what that means is it contains two genes that are both essentially tall. So we have uppercase T. So we have uppercase dark purple T and uppercase light purple T. Now, in this case, we have a short plant that is true breeding, which means both of these genes are lowercase t, and that means they're short, they're recessive, and so let's suppose we have a red color and we have the orange color for the second lowercase t. Now, this is called the law of dominance. What he proposed next was the principle of segregation also became known as the law of segregation or Mendel's law of segregation. Now, what he argued was that whenever the gametes are formed before we actually have the mating process take place, the two genes that code for that same trait, in this case the height, behave like particles and actually separate during the process of gamete formation. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So before they can combine to actually form the offspring, both of these must actually segregate. They must separate into different compartments, into different cells. For this particular case, we have the dark purple T go into its own cell and a light purple T also go into its own cell. And so let's suppose this is the male parent, so this is the male gametes. The same thing happens here. Let's say this is the female parent. So they, they separate, they segregate into these individual compartments, individual cells. Let's call these the female gametes. And notice that this means that the gametes, our sex cells, these sex cells right here are formed and only contain one copy of the pair of genes. So this is the pair of genes, but each one of these gametes contain a single copy of that pair of genes. And notice, we actually have no mixing between the genes. These genes are separate entities and they separate into these different compartments. And this separation process that takes place when we actually form the gametes is known as law of segregation. 
So this idea that the two hereditary factors, our genes, for any given trait, in this case our height, segregate from one another during gamete formation became known as Mendel's Law of Segregation. Now, the amazing thing about this discovery was this was basically discovered at the time when we knew nothing about meiosis or mitosis. So even though at the time when Mendel made the discovery, we knew what gametes were and we knew that gametes must fertilize to form the zygote, we knew nothing about how meiosis takes place. And so we knew nothing about how the gametes are actually formed. So although this was actually correct, it wasn't exactly correct because we knew nothing about meiosis. So now let's actually try to combine the concept of meiosis with the principle of segregation. So basically nowadays we know that segregation is a direct result of the separation of the homologous chromosomes that contain the two genes, those two hereditary factors, which, uh, which takes place during the process of meiosis. So let's basically tweak this slightly to see how it actually takes place. So let's suppose we have parent number one, this is parent number one, and this is parent number two. So what exactly does the cell look like inside the tall parent, the true breeding parent number one? So basically, we have a pair of homologous chromosomes. Chromosome number one is homologous to chromosome number two, and what that means is the genes found on this chromosomes are basically homologous. They code for that same trait that are found on this. So if this chromosome carries, let's say the dark purple uppercase T, then this one homologous to it carries the uppercase light purple T. Now, during, uh, during the process of meiosis, we have replication taking place, and each one of these are replicated to produce cystochromatids here and cystochromatids here. So these two are identical, these two are identical, but these are homologous with respect to one another. Next, meiosis one takes place. And when meiosis one takes place, these are basically pulled to opposite sides to form the two different cells, and we form the following cells. And when meiosis two takes place, then these are separated, these cystochromatids are separated, and we form the following four gametes of parent one. And the same exact thing takes place with parent number two, except here we have these two homologous chromosomes that contain genes that code for the short trait. So we have the lowercase red T and the lowercase uh, orange T. And so we have replication taking place to form these two pairs that now consist of identical sister chromatids, then these separate to opposite sides, then these separate to form the following four uh, gametes. And now that we form these two gametes, let's imagine this is the male, this is the female. One of the male has to combine with one of the female to basically form that final product, that final offspring, the F1 generation. So let's suppose that the uppercase T that is light purple mixes with the lowercase T that is red. So we have the mixing process take place and we form the following zygote that eventually gives rise to this F1 generation offspring. And so we have uppercase T, lowercase T, we basically have the following third case. And since the tall trait is dominant over that short trait, we have the fact that no matter which one of these possibilities we actually obtain, we always get the same exact result because uppercase T is dominant over lowercase T. We get the fact that this will always resemble this parent and never this parent. So notice in this particular example, this T could have mixed with this T to produce possibility one, or this T could have mixed with, could have mixed with this T to produce possibility two, or this could have mixed with this to produce possibility three, which we got in this case, or this T could have mixed with this to produce possibility four. And we have the same exact proportions, the same exact possibilities when these are mixed. 
So basically, this is what we call the law of segregation, and it takes place as a result of meiosis. So during the process of meiosis, those homologous chromosomes that contain the genes that code for any given trait basically separate from one another into their identical compartments, into their identical gametes, into their identical cells. And this is what we know as the principle or the law of segregation.